the Ricanon P Zoom 35 to 70 mm f3.5 to f4.5 macro was made in Japan by Ricoh and was first introduced on the market in the mid 1980s. The green letter P seen here on the front plate is an indicator that this lens is compatible with Ricoh's program auto exposure cameras, such as the Ricoh XRP multi program SLR. Popular photography magazine reviewed the Ricoh XRP together with this Ricanon Zoom. And in the article they published in 1985, they list the price of the zoom alone to be $220. I found my copy of this lens attached to a Ricoh KR30SP, which was another program auto exposure camera that was often paired with the zoom. I paid only $15 on eBay for this camera and lens combo, and the seller even included the original instruction booklets. This lens accepts filters with 55mm diameter. Aperture ranges from f3.5 to f22 with click stops in between. However, the maximum aperture is not constant throughout the zoom range. It is f3.5 only when the lens is at 35mm. When you zoom in, the maximum aperture changes to f4 when the lens is at 50mm and then it changes again to f4.5 at 70mm. The diaphragm is made of 8 rounded aperture blades. The overall length of this lens changes when you zoom between different focal lengths, reaching full extension when set to 35mm. If you want to use the macro feature, you will need to zoom out to 70mm, then push and hold the black pin that is next to the word macro and rotate the dial to the right. Now the lens is in macro mode and you can focus much closer, however this feature only works at 70mm. Focus throw is approximately 130 degrees. On the back this lens has Pentax K mount. I use just a cheap Pentax K to any X adapter so I can use this lens on my Sony camera. This lens weighs 368 grams. Minimum focusing distance from your subject to your film plane or sensor is 90 cm throughout the whole zoom range. But when the lens is set to macro mode at 70 mm, the minimum focusing distance becomes only 33 cm. The Ricanon P Zoom 35 to 70 mm f3.5 to f4.5 macro is one of the best bargains I've come across in a long time. I didn't know what to expect from this lens, since I mainly bought it because it was ridiculously cheap and I didn't have high hopes for its performance since the general opinion on vintage zooms is that they're mostly pretty bad. But all I can say is that this zoom kept surprising me over and over and over. When it comes to sharpness, this zoom is really good. Even wide open throughout all focal lengths, most of the image is very sharp with just some slight softness towards the corners. Stop down to f8 or f11, this lens becomes very sharp throughout the whole frame with really nice resolution that is quite impressive for a zoom from the 1980s. The best focal length when it comes to sharpness is definitely 50mm. With top notch performance, that will be hard to distinguish from a prime lens, especially when the zoom is stopped down a bit. At 35mm I find the best setting to be f11, with very good corner sharpness and great image quality. And at 70mm f8 is an excellent aperture setting giving you great resolution throughout the frame. The macro setting is also fantastic with great sharpness even when the lens is shot wide open. When it comes to colors, this lens has wonderful naturalistic look with pleasant hues and beautiful tones. I personally quite like the colors that come out of this Ricanon lens and I never had any issues with its color rendition. Contrast and saturation for the most part are excellent, but the one thing this lens does not like very much is front light, which causes some slight loss of contrast. As with most vintage lenses, vignetting is present when the lens is shot wide open, but that is completely gone by f8, no matter what focal length you choose to shoot with. When it comes to distortion, things are different depending on the focal length you choose. As can be expected, when the lens is zoomed out all the way to 35mm, there is visible barrel distortion. However, when you zoom in at 50mm, there is absolutely no distortion whatsoever, and the images you get from it are really well corrected. 
and when you zoom in all the way to 70 millimeters, there is some slight pen cushion distortion which is very negligible and can be easily corrected in post. But overall, this lens is much better corrected for distortion than I imagined a cheap 80s zoom will be. Flare and ghosting are surprisingly very well controlled with just some tiny bit of ghosting when the lens is pointed towards the sun. Perhaps the biggest surprise that I encountered with this lens was how well it managed chromatic aberrations. There is only a hint of purple fringing, barely visible when the lens is shot in challenging conditions, but for the most part the zoom did a great job, surprising me once again with its excellent performance. The build quality of this lens is also not too shabby. It's made mostly out of metal with a few plastic parts, but overall it feels quite solid and well put together. To be honest, I'm quite amazed that I was able to get all these shots with an old zoom lens that only cost me $15. And I'm glad that I tried it, because this lens reminded me that there are still wonderful gems to be discovered even amongst the cheapest lenses out there that most people will totally ignore. I personally really enjoyed shooting with this Rikkonen lens, and I can definitely recommend it to people with a very small budget who want the convenience of having several focal lenses but also the ability to shoot close-up shots when the opportunity presents itself. Of course, this zoom lens is not going to replace your primes, but if you are on a tight budget and want a reliable lens that will serve you well and deliver great results, then check out the Rikinon P Zoom 35-70mm f3.5 to f4.5 macro. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time here at Vintage Optics.